Effective leaders are the masters of feedback. Feedback, love it or hate it. If we want results, if we want growth, it has to happen. We hear a lot about workplace culture and mindsets. The place of these two factors is critical as to whether feedback will have an impact or whether it will fall on deaf ears. You know, the nodding head and murmurings of, yes, when in reality, you know, before you begin, things are not going to change. In New Zealand, we call this the year nah. Feedback must result in action. It must have an impact. We say, so what? What have I learnt from this? And now what? What will I do because of this? Feedback will not do a thing without the right mindset. Fixed mindsets will not result in learning and will not have the impact of action, change and development. A growth mindset has recently replaced with open to learning. I think this new phrase is in fact more limiting. Growth means change. Open to learning is very PC and suggests that I will learn, hmm, but I don't necessarily have to change. Feedback is an element of change. If things are to change, we must develop a culture where feedback features significantly. A culture of threat, power, authority will result in an unsafe, armoured environment. With this, feedback will be perceived as a judgment, pass, fail, not one of growth, development and change. We want an environment where feedback is expected, sought after, valued and a natural part of the daily, our daily lives. Best results come where the team are safe to dare, to fail, are challenged, are held accountable. Growth then happens and without the culture, feedback has less impact. Before we go any further, we must remember feedback works in partnership with communication. There are so many elements of this. CFU, check for understanding. Remember, message sent equals message received. Have we had trainings and learning sessions as a team about feedback, about communication, about norms, about expectations? And then what is your role? You're giving feedback, but why? What is the purpose and what is your role? Are you a coach? Are you auditing? Are you evaluating? Is your feedback about accountability? Is it as a mentor or as a learner? Let's explore three very typical types of feedback. Teacher to teacher feedback, or we could say student to student. Question, is it appropriate? And if so, when? To achieve this, the purpose must be clear. Expectations and protocols are in place and boundaries are explicit. We must do this without judgment. But is it possible for a teacher to teacher or a student to student to pass feedback but not judgment? We have to have a culture of learning and growth. And I suggest we look at things like lesson study or lesson scrutiny, shared planning, shared ownership, plan a lesson together and then teach it with your planning team observing. Review what happened, refine it, replan, and then have the next person teach the same lesson, same process again and again. We feedback on our plan and on our behaviours, the interactions. As with audits, peer reviews, book scrutinies, conversations are about observable behaviours and evidence, not opinion and judgement. Ask questions. This is key. Don't make statements. And do you have a rubric? Knowing what you are feeding back on and why. Explore learning walks. And I say learning walks, not walkthroughs. Learning walks are where the person is observing, the person who is observing is the person who is learning. There is a set purpose to the visit. I walk, I learn, I ask questions, I am not evaluating. Question, 
Can teacher to teacher or student to stu student feedback actually be non-judgmental? So then we learn, we jump to that next part of where it is sort of more top down. Teacher to student feedback. Always specific to the learning. A learning question or a learning outcome. Has to be timely. Not a week later. Not every day. Or does it? Audience focused not compliance driven drives me mad when we have every piece of work marked because the school expects me to. It must mean something to the student not giving feedback and marking because we are told to. It has to be accessible to the student. Does the student understand it, value it and know what to do because of it? Are you using oral feedback? Do you have codes that align with your oral feedback to remind the learner of the conversation? Please do not write what they don't understand. Do you review feedback from the last piece of work with the student before you start the next part of your lesson? So you start the lesson with feedback reflection. And I've got some questions about all of this. Are ticks and percentages really feedback? And does every piece of work need feedback? Think like this. Do you need or want feedback on everything that you do? So then, does a student need this? And are you in overkill mode? Two stars and a wish, you know, stamps and you compliance, you fill everything in because you've forgotten the audience. And then as a leader, who monitors the impact of this feedback? Let's jump to leader to teacher feedback. This one's very common and leaders seem to like it. Before you start, know your audience, understand your people. Have you ever asked the people you work with how they would like to receive feedback? Or do you just go ahead and do it your way? Do they like it written or oral? Do they want meetings planned or is it okay just to turn up? Do they like a formal setting or not? Do they like to pre-read the feedbacks or are they happy to discuss it as you share? Have you consulted your staff? Profile them, you know, disc profile. Understand your people. Respond to this. Feedback, positive or for growth, needs to be in a rec received in a way that works with the person receiving it. Remember that a teacher's perception is their reality. We can all see the same thing with a different understanding. How you share feedback matters. The level of the competency of the teacher comes into play here. Competency, not experience. Don't confuse the two. The less competent, be direct. Talk in statements and measures. Give small amounts, often measured, specific, with action steps. And the more competent teacher, be less direct, offer fewer statements and feedback that will describe behaviour and evidence. Your feedback should be quite question heavy. Ask questions and have them answer. You are pushing the competent teacher to be reflective, to lead themselves to their next steps. Again, describe the behaviour and evidence and let them make the judgement. Okay, know thy purpose, your why. Why are you giving this feedback? Is it to redirect? Is it for growth? Is it about accountability, evaluation and judgment? When you know why you are feeding back, your format and your language will change. And the big question here, everyone knows the sandwich, that hamburger approach. You know, share a strength, then a growth point and then another strength. Does this really work? Is this really an effective strategy? What do you remember? The indirect approach of this, the indirect nature of this approach, kills the clarity that we need for growth. Develop the culture where this isn't needed. You can just say what needs to be said. Remember, the important stuff or a good part of the sandwich gets lost in the bread. So now, let's summarise. Do I know why I am feeding back? Have I tailored my feedback to my audience? Is the understanding there? Check for understanding. OTL, are they open to learning? Have we developed a culture of feedback? 
Have I taught feedback? And does my feedback show impact? What we haven't explored in this wee discussion is bottom-up feedback, 360. How do you as a leader seek feedback? Are you brave enough? Or do you avoid it? Is there value in this? Ah, that's another discussion. But I dare you to try it. <laughs>